The day before the final rest day of this year's Vuelta, a daunting task ahead of everybody. 198 kilometers in total, stage 15 was always going to bite. But with a long, flat introduction before the mountains began, a breakaway was surely going to be tempted. As it was, the pace at the beginning of the day was absolutely relentless, and the quality of the break when it came, and it came very quickly, was extremely high. Well, 25 great riders, any of whom could have dominated the day, went up the road. But Kai Rural had missed it, and Movistar wanted to be part of proceedings as well. And as a result, the push into the gap meant that the peloton fractured. The pace was relentless. 51 and more kilometers were completed within the first hour. From that break, as itself broke down, we had Sivakov pushing on for Ineos Grenadiers, along with Magnus Court, already a double stage winner. Well, as the climbs started to rain down upon us as well, it was getting very selective out front. Fabio Ru and Raf Micah went off, but Micah didn't like the company. And so he pushed on alone with 87.3 kilometers to go. He was starting to assemble some fine mountains points as well. Fabio Ru was about to be reabsorbed and a secondary pack of around eight riders was pushing on in the wake of this man. Well, who from them would be successful? Carlos Verona? No. There was other great names as well within that group that found themselves bitten by the day. Kreisweig ultimately pushed on. Great tactical work by Jumbo Visma had been implanting various riders, including Sepp Kuss in an earlier break, and now Kreisweig out of this one, guaranteed to get a good result, you might think. Would Kreisweig be able to catch Micah? That was the big question. And with 26.3 kilometers to go, we wondered. But much of the rest of the day was downhill. And the final peak of a category three tempted the pack here, as you can see with Adam Yates deciding that from a group of favorites, he'd like a little bit of time, thank you very much. He went off with Miguel Angel Lopez, wondering about chasing him and then thinking again. Nobody though could catch Micah. He'd been alone for much of the day, pointing to the sky and dedicating his win to his recently departed father. A day rack full of emotions, guts and verve, and this man delivered. It was exceptional. Well, it had been loud at the beginning of the day, I guess you might say quite benign at the end of it, but it certainly was a day to remember. Kreisweig coming home in second place, ahead of Chris Hamilton from Team DSM. And then we waited to see whether Adam Yates would succeed in holding on the gap. He did, and he found 15 seconds on the chasers who came in together. This group included all of the big names. Ciccone led them in, but old Christian Eiking was close at hand and stays in the red jersey after Intermarchi Wanti had done so much work on the day. Roglic with Mass, Bernal, they were all here. Rafa Mica delivering a superb win. And in so doing, starting to assemble points to the King of the Mountains competition as well. You may well repeat the feat. Confirmation of how the day came to a close. Mica winning by a margin of a minute and 27 clear of Kreisweig. And this man, Odd Christian Eiking, makes it a ninth day for the red jersey to stay at Intermarche Wanti after Ryan Tarame had had the jersey earlier in this race. A remarkable performance by him and indeed his team. Spectacular. Still leads by the same margin ahead of Guillaume Martin, who finished with Christian Eiking today. Roglic, Mass, Lopez, Haig, Bernal, Yates, Kuss and Grosshartner, with Adam Yates, of course, finding that crucial, perhaps, 15 seconds today. Let us see. Rest day with a big transfer of over 500 kilometres. And then when we go racing again, this. Stage 16, a precursor to the high ground. This will be Tuesday and one for the sprinters, you imagine. But the mountains are looming, starting with Covadonga on stage 17 and then more pain all the way to Santiago de Compostela.